guys, it's me, Halloween Dan, doing one more prop review video for this week at least. I do want to talk at some point about Party City and their awesome lineup, which was kind of properly revealed the other day. But for now, I just wanted to touch on something that at the beginning of the year was all anybody could talk about. It was they were the first props really that we'd seen in 2023, and they looked phenomenal, and everyone was raving about them. And then everything went very quiet ever since. Barely anyone spoken about them. I've not seen really anyone do any other kind of reaction videos, even though now some better footage of these props have come out. And I think that's a shame because I really like these props and it's a firm that I always enjoy seeing their stuff as well. And that is Morris Costumes. So today I'm going to be having a look at the slightly better footage that we've had of the main props that they have released for the 2023 season. So let's have a good look at these. So the first prop I really wanted to talk about was one that I think for a lot of people, this was a really cool prop. I think lots of people were very excited about this prop when it was first, we first saw this imagery. And that is the six foot mangy rat. Now this prop is not just a rat. It is a creepy, disgusting, mutated looking rat. The fact that it's over six foot <laughs> is enough to tell you that. It's got these glaring red eyes, these really creepy, quite sharp looking teeth. The fur is, as its name suggests, mangy and disgusting. It's tattered and torn. It just looks really creepy and gross. And even better, what I thought was a really good move by Morris Costumes here, they didn't make it speak. They aren't giving it some creepy little phrases. They just have it squeaking and making rat noises, basically. It is a creepy, creepy prop, and I really like it. I wouldn't personally buy it. I don't think it would go anywhere in my hoard. It would be completely unrelated to anything else. But for sheer creepiness, I can 100% get behind this. <laughs> the next prop that people were very excited about was the Morris Costumes Carnival Barker. Now, I liked this guy, which was kind of unusual for me. I didn't think I was gonna like this guy. Anything clown related, I'm usually completely not interested in. And carnival stuff, I don't have a carnival theme, so I don't really, this wouldn't fit in with anything that I have. But this guy I found interesting because he's not really a clown, he's a carnival barker. He's the guy stood at the front of the carnival trying to get you to go inside. He's creepy looking, he's got that bizarre pointy purple hair. His costume is clearly a carnival costume, kind of, but it's kind of blood splattered and gross. He's stood on this great big box that says Carnival of Souls, $5, which in itself is a really cool feature. I think overall he's only about six foot high, so he's not a massive prop, but he's got a huge amount of movement. He's got servo motors in his head and in his shoulders, so he's turning around a little bit. He's moving his arms. He's clearly supposed to be shouting through his cone thing that is which makes him a carnival bargain he's got digit eyes which i really like digit eyes on props so everything about this is kind of ticking the boxes and i think even if you don't have a carnival theme he would go in almost any haunt because you're trying to when you do a haunt you're trying to get people's attention and get them to roll up roll up come and have a look at the freak show you know and i think that's what most people's haunts are a classic freak show so this would go well in most people's haunts he just i don't know it's whether you think he would match what you have it's borderline with me, but I do like him. Hey, I didn't invite them, and they won't leave. Do me a favor and oust them yourself. Just watch out you don't end up as depraved as they are. They have very convincing tactics. The third prop I'm going to talk about is probably my personal favourite, but I understand if it's not everybody's, and that is the Soul Stealer. 
Now, I've spoken about the Soul Stealer a few times, and I even included him in my top 10 Reapers because he is a Reaper-esque prop. He definitely has the Reaper vibe. His movement is quite simple, swaying backwards and forwards and a movement of the arm. But really, I think that's all you need. He's holding a book, which I think is described as the Book of the Dead. He's saying some pretty cool phrases. He's just got the red LED eyes rather than digit eyes. He perhaps didn't even need the red eyes, I'm not sure. And then one of the main sort of selling points of this is that he stood behind this creepy tombstone and then at some point the tombstone breaks open and lights light, light that breaking action up and you can also plug in a smoke machine for this added sort of smoke effect. I personally think it's a really cool prop and because I like to go for the classic sort of graveyard theme it goes really really well with what I would put in. I'm not sure I need a Reaper at this moment in time, so I'm not sure I'll be buying this guy anytime soon. But I really, really like it. As simple as it is, I think it's a pretty cool prop. With the power of the Book of the Dead, you will suffer an eternity of servitude. Now come and look upon these dark forces. <laughs> then Morris Costumes only recently on Instagram rather than their YouTube page revealed some more basic props the other day, hanging props. We had the hanging gargoyle and the hanging hag. The hag was very, very basic, just a very generic looking hanging witch that I think everyone has seen at some point. She's slightly better than the hanging witches and props that we sometimes get here in the UK, but only just. Her mouth wasn't even moving, she was just saying some very basic witch phrases. I can see your future, dearie. Let me cast my seeing eye into the foggy mists of the great beyond. The hanging gargoyle actually looked really cool. I've got a bit of a thing for gargoyles, and he was quite a cool looking gargoyle. The animation was very basic, but I could appreciate it. It was pretty cool. But probably the best hanging prop of the bunch, the creepiest as far as I was concerned, was the slashing bat or just the menacing hanging bat. It's got a couple of names depending on where you see the footage from. This guy is really creepy. It's definitely got vampire bat vibes all over it. It's Animation again is very simple. It's just very slowly flapping its wings and it's making bat noises, creepy bat noises, nose phrases, just bat noises. But I like that. I enjoy that. I think it's really, really cool. And I think having that just in the background of a horn or if you've got any kind of vampire-ish element, I mean, bats, I've said it in the last video, bats go with hand in hand with Halloween. So I think it's a classic vibe that you can't really beat. And I really like this guy. I, if he wasn't too expensive, I think I'd buy him. I really think I would. There were other props that Morris Costumes revealed earlier on in the year, or sort of. There was a kind of a groundsman prop at one point, which we briefly saw images of, but there hasn't been any further footage of this guy, and it's all gone very quiet. He was kind of cool. I liked the look of him. He was very different kind of vibe. It was a bit like the graveyard keeper guy, that kind of vibe, except obviously he was a groundskeeper, so he had these shears, which and he was kind of bloodied up and stuff. He was kind of an interesting idea of a prop, but then we haven't seen an awful lot else of him since then. I don't know, maybe they're not even going to release him this year. Who knows? But I think it's been a bit of a shame that Morris Costumes hasn't been overly spoken about this year. They have got a great range of props and I always really like Morris Costumes, so well done Morris Costumes. I think that your lineup this year was pretty damn awesome. And with that being said, that's it for today, guys. I won't be making a video next week because I am away. I'm going to the fantastic city of York, which is 100% Halloween vibe city, basically. If you like Harry Potter and anywhere that kind of looks a bit twisted and warped and a little bit like, I don't know, like Diagon Alley or something like that, then York's the place for you. It really has all those elements. It's very medieval, very creepy. It's got bloody ghost stories every to every street you turn down. So I'm really looking forward to going there for a few days and I will try to take some interesting videos if I get the chance. But other than that, guys, I will see you in the next one. Keep it spooky. Bye.